Hello everyone. First and foremost, I just want to say I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and making the best out of this social distancing that we're all having to do. My name is Kelsey Biglow and I'm a broadcasting student at Northeast Community College. Now, it's been quite the chaotic time around our world, but as a college student, it's been quite the adjustment. Now, I'm sure most of you probably know that our classes have been switched to an online setting because of COVID-19. Now, personally, my daily schedule has changed immensely, basically a full 180. Things are completely different the way I've been doing it since I've been back at home. So during the day, I typically help my dad with some construction work, and then I spend the evening doing my classwork and uh, relaxing, spending a little bit of time with family. And then the weekends, I also catch up on a little bit of classwork as well. So it's been a lot different compared to going to class every single day throughout the weekday and then spending the weekends working. So it's been a vice versa kind of effect here, but it's been crazy. It's been kind of hard to adapt to, but we're making it through. We only have about a week left of classes, so that's super exciting. But as I said, it's been quite the change, and it's been tough for me. I miss everything about the Northeast campus. I mean, I miss my roommates, I miss my classmates, and I miss all of the other great people that are surrounding Northeast campus. It's it's crazy how much you uh, miss them once you're gone and don't realize how great you have it until you're back at home or cooped up or whatever the situation may be. So, as I said, COVID-19 has brought a big challenge to me personally, and I'm sure all of you can relate to that. And I'm sure, as you can also relate to the fact that you're ready for it to be over, I am far past the point of it, uh, ready for it to be over. But it's been tough, but I, I am trying to take a few positives out of it. I've learned a lot. I've learned how to roll with the punches, and I've also learned how to quickly adapt to change. That's something that I'm not very good at. I'm a type A personality, so I like to have things planned out. And obviously with the coronavirus, there is no plan whatsoever uh, that is set in stone. So it's been kind of hard, but we're making it through. We're getting there. But since the coronavirus has us all cooped up, we thought it'd be a fun idea to take you guys on a little road trip while you sit right there in your living room, in your kitchen, in your dining room, wherever it is that you're sitting, hopefully on a couch somewhere comfortable. We thought it'd be a fun idea to take you on a little bit of a road trip while you're social distancing. So with that being said, I want to take you on a tour of my hometown, Milligan, Nebraska. Hello and welcome to my hometown, Milligan, otherwise known as the hospitality capital of Nebraska. This little railroad town sits in the southeast portion of the state. Milligan got its start as a railroad town that was near Turkey Creek, which was a good water source for steam locomotives. The six acre piece of land purchased on April 9, 1887, was named for Frank Milligan, one of the directors of the railroad line. The first lots were bought in August of that same year and the town busted into the scene. Milligan is a small town that is home to just under 300 people, and believe me, not much goes on here. The highest population ever recorded for Milligan was 422, recorded in 1930. It is a typical small town where everybody knows everybody and everyone seems to be related in some way, shape, or form. As you are welcomed into Milligan from the north corner, as we call it, the first building in town you will see is where I attended third through sixth grades. The brick schoolhouse was built in 1913, a gymnasium was added in 1956, and then additional classrooms were built in 1969. The school building sits on the north end of Main Street in Milligan, and it housed a K-12 school system, the home of the Roosters, until 2002. In 2003, Milligan had to fully consolidate with Exeter to create Exeter Milligan Public Schools, which is where I attended school. The Milligan School still houses grades 3 through 6, while Exeter houses the rest of the classes. Just a hop, skip, and a jump down the road, you will find the American Legion. The American Legion sits on land that was actually donated by the Milligan School District as a memorial to the boys who lost their lives in France during World War I as well as the World War I President Woodrow Wilson. Work at the American Legion Park started in 1927. Trees were planted to honor the servicemen and a copper box containing pictures and Legion records as well as other data was placed in the base of the monument. More work has since been done by the Legion members and the park continues to be just one piece of history in Milligan. Right next to the American Legion is the newly constructed Milligan Community Park once known as the Fun For All Park. The park contains a stand with tourist information, even though I'm not quite sure Milligan has many tourists, but it is there, as well as a picnic area and a restroom. 
The park is still a work in progress and with more phases of the park yet to come. As you work your way down the highway that runs through town, you will find the Million Fire Department, which was organized in 1931 and expanded to a rural fire district in 1951. Since 1968, the fire personnel has also provided Milligan with a rescue unit. Now shifting gears and working our way to the classic red brick road known as Main Street. This is where you will find basically all of the businesses in town. For a small town, Milligan offers quality services from restaurants and bars to boutiques and even a small medical clinic. Milligan's Main Street is the only street in town that really ever has anything going on. The brick road was paved in 1925, with the rest of the roads in town being paved by 1988. Traveling down Main Street, you will find different businesses such as two banks, Farmers and Merchants Bank, and the First Bank of Utica. Two insurance agencies are also located in Milligan, Oliva Insurance and Milligan Insurance Agency. Of course, Main Street is where you'll find the local post office, which is extremely small. Next to the post office, if you turn around, is a mural depicting different aspects of Milligan's history, including some check paintings and even the famous kolaches of Grandma Milligan. Now, that is not the only mural in downtown Milligan. Just down the block is a relatively new mural that shows the view from north of Milligan, looking at the high school and the grain elevator. It also has some vintage aircraft flying in the sky. And finally, one last mural that is downtown can be found in on the side of Mickle Service, which is no longer a business. This mural is a tribute to two of Milligan's most famous, or infamous, residents Ray Kerpichka and Super Stu Vavra. Shifting away from the murals, about midway down Main Street sits the two bars of Milligan, and one of which includes a restaurant. Ron's Tavern is a local bar and coffee shop where the locals hang out each morning. Just down the road from Ron's is Charlie's Pub, or formerly known as Evening with Friends. Charlie's Pub is a bar and a restaurant that features amazing burgers and nightly specials. One of the coolest features about the pub is the log cabin that is built on the inside of the building. Other main features of downtown Milligan include a meat locker, a daycare, a new public library, a boutique, a salon, two churches, and even a small medical center. As with all small towns, you can't forget about the co-op. Co-op and Kushik Milling are located on the south end of Main Street. Last, but certainly not least, is the most historic building in town. The Milligan Auditorium, built in 1929, has actually been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. The first thought of this check building was in 1916. The war brought the funding to a halt, and it wasn't until 12 years later that the idea resurfaced. On October 18, 1928, it was set that the goal was to build and operate, quote unquote, a community building wherein dances, theater, entertainment, and all other legitimate public amusements may be carried on. Eight local lodges came together to try to come up with $50,000. Each member of the eight lodges each loaned $10 to aid in building the hall. Work on the auditorium began on October 25, 1929. Many volunteers came forward to help dig the basement as well as pour concrete. The dedication ceremony on October 25th, 26th, and 27th of 1930 lasted three days with a concert and a dance on Friday night. The building has played a big role for Milligan ever since. From 1941 to 1962, movies were shown in the auditorium. The last time the projection equipment was used was in 1991 for, yes, you guessed it, a Czech film. Throughout the years, dances have been held there, and it was not unusual to have 12 dances in one month. The building has been added to and renovated throughout the years. The building has since been used for everything from weddings to graduation ceremonies. The basement of the auditorium is known as the Underground and is open every Sunday afternoon for drinks, burgers, and snacks. Just behind the auditorium across the alleyway sits another big part of Milligan, the Centennial Garden or otherwise known as the Beer Garden. The garden was added in 1989 and is one of the most impressive outdoor concert venues in the state. The Centennial Garden has been the site of Milligan's annual celebration, June Jubilee, for many years as well as reunions, weddings, and other events. 
The Milligan Auditorium and Centennial Garden are the heart of Milligan. Although there isn't much to do in Milligan, it is my hometown and I wouldn't trade it for the world. A sense of family and community is built in here, and I know that this is always the place that I can call home. Hello, I'm Sam Mullen from McCook, Nebraska. Got to give a couple of shout outs here uh, to my mom and my dad. Hello, I'm doing fine. Still alive up here in Norfolk, but I'm doing fine. Um, also to my grandma, grandpa, Noel in Osborne, Kansas, uh, give a big shout out and a warm welcome to them as well. My grandma, grandpa Beaker back home and my sister, uh, Addison, I guess as well. So a big shout out and a big old wave here, uh, from Norfolk, uh, during <clears throat> this time, uh, taking classes at home, it's, it's been a little weird. Uh, most of the time I've been working pretty much every single day so far. Um, so I haven't been, you know, just lounging around or anything during this. Um, but I've been outside working and having a good time. Um, the thing I miss the most, obviously, is uh, just calling games. I mean, that was that's kind of one of the big things that uh, um, I came to Northeast for. And obviously, I can't call any more games because there's no sports going on. Um, that was a big thing. The other big thing is just you know hanging out with everybody. That was it's something that I took for granted. I think. And I think we all took for granted as well. I mean, I miss just hanging out with everybody and chatting and getting to see everybody for a few class periods a day. Um, online classes, they were a challenge to start. They still are a challenge. I think taking any classes online is a challenge, but I've, I've adapted. I kind of understand the schedule now, and the teachers have been really good uh, kind of assigning everything on one day so you don't have to worry about doing stuff like that throughout the week. Um, some things I've taken away, obviously, just enjoy life. I mean... Uh, obviously, as you can tell, life is not normal, and it probably will never go back to normal. Um, but just enjoy life because you never know when you have to stay inside your house or uh, you might not be able to do this or do that. Um, I would say it, it it has made me stronger, um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to help me adapt to new challenges. I mean, obviously, this is something you're never going to forget. I think it's made me stronger and just you know trying to figure out uh, other stuff to do and find some other hobbies as well. Um, but now I'd like to take you on a tour of my hometown. Hi, my name is Sam Knoll, and today I'm going to be showing you around my hometown. I am from McCook, Nebraska. It is located in the southwest part of the state, about four hours away from Lincoln. McCook has a population of about 7,000 people. There are many things in McCook that are amazing, and I can't wait to show you around town. McCook is laid out pretty simple and has an old class downtown that is known as the Bricks with many local restaurants and businesses. All of them thrive on Main Street in McCook that is known as George Norris Avenue, which is home to one of the most famous bakeries in the world. That famous bakery is Sainert's Bakery. Sainert's Bakeries were first opened in 1897 and have been passed down through generations to today. Sainert's is known for their world class donuts and sandwiches, but also because they host many concerts each year. They've won numerous awards over the years, including the James Beard Foundation American Classics Award winner this year. Staying downtown after you get your donut, you can make your way up to Norris Park. It is in the center of town and is home to Heritage Days every October. The park is also just across the street from the homes of two of the most famous people from McCook. George Norris, who was a five-term congressman and state senator, located just down the street, is also the home of Ben Nelson, former governor of Nebraska. Besides Norris Avenue, as you continue to make your way across town, you will see many great neighborhoods and the likes of the high school and city offices. On your way out of town, there's one last place you need to eat, and that is the world-famous Max Restaurant, located along B Street. Max has some of the best burgers around, along with the best french fries, onion rings, and whatever else goes along in your meal. Like I said, it's one last stop you definitely need to make. Well, that's all the time we have, so I hope you enjoyed going around McCook with me today and put it on your map, too, next time you travel down to the southwest part of the state. My name is Trevor Dempster. I'm from O'Neill, Nebraska. I'm going like to give a quick shout-out to some of my friends, Grady Semin, Connor Semin, and Dennis Ferreira. They're some of my best friends right now. Um, life like this during quarantine has been difficult, and especially taking classes from home because some people struggle with taking online classes. Um, I know that I'm one of them. And it's been difficult to adapt to going from a hands-on experience like it is at Northeast to going to home and not being able to have access to some of that good equipment that they have. Um, most of my days I'm spent either working or uh, going to school, online that is. Um, 
some of the things that I miss the most is being around the my classmates. I think that just being able to be around them in the studio, cracking jokes and having fun and all that is definitely one of the things that I miss the most. Um, online classes, like I said, have been a challenge for me, um, but there's always, always room for improvement. Um, something that I'm taking away from this is that people who take online classes and work a job or two and also have family at home that they have to take care of is a big shout out to them because that is a huge thing that just can't be accomplished overnight and it takes a lot of training and work to do. Um, I definitely think it's going to make me stronger in the end with this whole quarantine. Um, and new challenges that I've experienced are, like I said, the online classes. It's difficult to take online classes. I don't do particularly well with them, but it's something that I've learned to adapt in how to go about uh, managing my time. Now, I would like to take you on a tour of my hometown. My hometown is a very special place to me for many reasons. We are the Irish capital of Nebraska, for which on St. Patrick's Day we host many events from a parade to a fun run to even a dodgeball tournament. O'Neill recently put up a brand new water tower that has gone up on the east side of town to replace the much outdated older one that was in the middle of town. I graduated from O'Neill High School in 2018 would just got a brand new expansion from a new gym, new parking lot, and new classrooms. As I grew up, there was one place to hang out, and that was the Lions Kitty Park a block south of my home. Anything and everything happened there from wiffle ball tournaments to basketball games to even weddings. And that is my hometown, just small town Nebraska living. What's going on everyone? My name is Caleb Zamora. I live in Pierce, Nebraska, and I first would like to shout out my friends. There's a lot of them, so if I miss some, I apologize. Um, Colin, Ashton, Braden, Ethan, Ian, uh, Wyatt, Cody, okay, Carly, Brenna, Meredith, Macy, the other Macy, um, Abby, um, Bradley, Travis, Dan, the other Braden, and uh, oh goodness. Um, and then there is a lot more. I think I missed uh, Jacob, um, Ryder, Corday, Colby, um, and I think that's every. I, I, I know I'm missing some, so I apologize if I missed the, the shout out, but yeah. I would say life has been a huge roller coaster since this whole coronavirus thing started. You know, we, we went to online classes and that has been extremely difficult, I would say. Um, online classes are not my favorite thing to begin with. And so not, you know, have been under the teacher's instructions, you know, not seeing the teacher every day, you know, not being hands on with the technology we have every day it is really crazy and trying to do all of this um, from home has been a it has been a challenge and uh, some homework has been a challenge because I'm so used to being in school finishing it there right away and so trying to do all of this is kind of nuts and I'm kind of glad that we're only two weeks or some weeks away from graduating um, and I would also say some things that I have missed the most about all of this is seeing my broadcasting friends and all my friends from Northeast Community College um, you know they they mean a lot to me the teachers, the teachers who have helped me come this far, um, they've they've really helped me through all of this, and you know it's been kind of nuts. I do miss them. I do miss some of the broadcasting classes and all that. So that has been kind of kind of nuts for me. Um, that, that's that's some things that I've missed the most. Um, what I'm doing here around the house, um, I've just been home. I've been doing some chores. I've been working. Um, I've been just spending my time around home trying to get some exercise on the Pierce High track um, just to keep myself a little bit in shape because let's just face it I've probably gained some pounds while in this quarantine I'm sure some people have so um, that, that's what I've been doing kind of just working on schoolwork working uh, just in, in a job and I've been helping my family along with their chores and just been helping my grandpa with his new shed he's building currently so that's what I've been doing most of the quarantine to me, I think this was a tremendous challenge. Um, I thought this was pretty difficult, you know. After spring break, you know, I thought going in, you know, I had a huge project due, had a Mario Kart tournament all set up, you know, all of a sudden, that went down the drain. I 
because of all this coronavirus stuff. So it's been a tremendous challenge. So now I've had to shake my project into what it has become the coronavirus and what ha and what has happened and how it's affected people. And you know, I like to give you know a good shout out to all the healthcare workers who are working their butt off trying to kick coronavirus's butt. Uh, you know, nursing home. You know, people at the nursing home, the hospitals, and just doctors and all and every single one of them. Uh, I like to give a huge thanks to all the healthcare workers who are working their butt off trying to um, do all this. Okay. And yeah, you just kind of give them any more credit for what they're doing. Now, that's the end of just me. Now, I'm going to take you on a tour of my hometown. This is where I went to elementary school. Um, you know, it's a pretty, pretty nice place. It brings back a lot of crazy memories of my devilish, devilish childhood when I was a kid. Um, you know, I remember going on field trips, playing some flag football, you know, and go, doing all that crazy stuff, doing a, some crazy science projects. But yeah, this is where my elementary school is. Uh, kind of neat. Uh, home of some crazy memories. This right here brings back a lot of crazy memories. Um, just a lot of tremendous memories. But here is my beautiful high school. Um, you know, going to class here was actually extremely fun. Uh, spending time with all my friends, you know, playing sports here. Um, it was all just pretty amazing. It's a pretty solid school. Um, it is extremely nice and you know, I can say I came from Pierce, Nebraska because this is a good respected program. So uh, this is just, this brings back a lot of memories here at Pierce High School. You know, just expanding more on what I was talking about the high school, you know, all the great memories out of here. You know, graduated from the class of 2018. You know, you, know, you see all of our football, our sports accomplishments here, you know. Um, it was just a beautiful place to be at and a beautiful, beautiful place to play. You know sports you know over here we have our pretty nice football field um i i made had a lot of memories here one of my favorite memories here was senior night against madison blew them out and um but uh after the game it was a heartwarming moment because madison lost but they would move a class down and they want to ever play here again or i guess right now they would never play here again and so we gave them hugs after the game we had just good sportsmanship all around but um these seats are filled all the way. Can't give enough credit to all of our fans who come and see us play um, every year. The uh, stands are pretty packed here. Uh, even at away games, um, there's just a, a lot of fans filled up to the seats just to cheer on us. It was like one of the best things that ever happened to me was introduce me to football and all the amazing coaches that coached me. Um, it was just a great time here at the high school. Uh, I miss all my friends. I do miss this um, because I was definitely way better in shape. Um, but yeah, uh, this was just a tremendous place for me and I do miss it a lot. Right here we have the liquor store where, you know, it's kind of a hot spot for, I guess, in the mornings for older people not like me to wake up at 6 a.m. to talk all the good old Pierce gossip. You know, here uh, people drink coffee here. Just get whatever. And this is kind of a hot spot for people who wake up early in the morning because when I talk some gossip, this is the place you want to be. Of course, I have to show one of the um, busiest, busiest um, gas stations because here in Pierce, we don't have that many gas stations. It's here and Tom's, but this is the best one, the best gas station by far is Casey's. Of course, you can't really go too far without seeing a Casey's here in Nebraska, but um, yeah, they have amazing pizza, great breadsticks. They have a variety of, of crap. Uh, it's a lot of good stuff. Um, I come here to, to fill in gas, get drinks, whatever, and I've not been disappointed yet. Uh, so yeah, this has been an amazing, great place just to go. Uh, you can also sit down and eat pizza if you want. So yeah, overall, amazing gas station. And this is where most Pierce people go get gas. Now where I go to you know hang out with all my friends and all that is out here in the country. Um, my friends have a nice little house um, in the country. Well, I guess not a house, <laughs> more of a trailer park or some I don't know trailer house if anything, you know. But you know they're in college, so obviously. But um, but yeah, this is where I come to hang out with my friends, party, do some crazy stuff that I probably should not mention. But yeah, this is where I go, hang out with all my friends. 
Um, I obviously can't show you the house of where I go, of where they're at, you know, but, um, but it's out here in the country. Um, again, beautiful place to be. Um, I love my hometown and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my hometown video. My name is Lance Vine. I am from Arlington, Nebraska, and my life at home taking online classes has been pretty boring. Not really much to do. Once you get your assignments done, it's the time is yours, and I get them done per, on, early on time, try my best, and then I have a lot of time to myself, so it's boring. So I spend my free time watching Netflix, movies, playing video games, and different things like that. One thing that I miss the most about college is taking classes in person, and I miss my friends and everybody that I always hung out with. I miss all of them. Hopefully they're all doing well, and I can't wait to see them again next year. Online classes, I've adapted pretty well. It's always something that I could have done, and I don't really have a problem with taking online classes. One thing that I am taking away from this experience is don't take things for granted because you never know when something will be taken away from you. So uh, de definitely next year I will not take being on campus for granted at all, taking in-person classes. I will make sure that I enjoy every second of it. And one thing that's helping me adapt to all these new challenges is just my friends and my family and especially my instructor, Brian. He, they all have done a lot for me, getting me adapted, getting me going. And, you know, I respect them a lot for that. And now I would like to take you on a tour of my hometown. Arlington, Nebraska. My hometown. It has everything that a small town could ask for. A Casey's. And a Shell. Besides that, here is where Arlington High School can call home. This is where I attended high school and was in the graduating class of 2019. Right across the street is the local track and field. Just down the road is the softball complex in Bell, Bell Creek Memorial Park. Just up the street is downtown. In downtown, we have the newly built Village Hall, a post office, and a branch of Two Rivers Bank. Not much else going on downtown with nearby Fremont winning the business of the locals here. Lastly, we have the fairgrounds. The Washington County Fair is held here every year in August. I love Arlington, and I would not want to call anywhere else home. Hello there, my name is Leonard Shecker. I live in my hometown of O'Neill, Nebraska, and I want to give a shout out to any of my friends, especially Sarah. She's probably the one who's most likely watching this. I'm sure this is difficult for all of us right now, myself included. We are all making adjustments and nothing is quite the normal way it used to be right now, uh, like classes. For example, all of our classes are online right now, and I know for some people it is very hard to adjust to. Thankfully for me, I had an online class in my first semester, so I kind of had an idea of how things would go and, and what exactly to be doing, so I was a little bit prepared to move into classes, uh, move everything online for this semester, but I will definitely be happy, hopefully, to go back to taking classes in person in the fall semester. That's probably what I'm missing the most right now is is being able to move around freely, being able to physically attend my classes, be there in person. It's, uh, it's something that I will be happy to get back to. I think everybody will be happy to get back to the normalcy of things when all of this kind of dies down. But at least I've been surviving. I think I'm getting all of my class assignments turned in on time. Uh, outside of class, I'm enjoying life as much as I can. I'm just relaxing a lot, otherwise going to work pretty much only on the weekends when I when I need to. Uh, so outside of school, 
even things are going pretty well right now all things considered I think all of this is showing me that we really do take things for granted everyday normal little tiny things that we don't even think about like human interaction being able to freely move around without the worry of contracting a virus it's uh, something I've already said that I'm gonna be happy to get back to really I'm just hoping that everyone comes out of this better in the end but anyway now I think it's time to show you a tour of my hometown Thanks for joining me for a trip around my hometown, O'Neill, Nebraska. There's a few fun things that you can do while you're here. For example, you can go bowling at O'Neill Lanes, except during the summer because it's owned by farmers and so they'll be farming. We also have an O'Neill swimming pool. Not many people are swimming in it, in it right now, basically because it is winter still. And we even have our own O'Neill Golf Club, which believe it or not is accompanied by a golf course. And we have the Cowboy Trail coming through O'Neill. It extends from Narfolk all the way to Valentine. And there's also a few places to eat. We have West Side Restaurant. It doesn't look like much on the outside, but the food is what matters. We also have Holt County Grill, as well as the newly opened McNally's Corner. And also newly opened is Taco and Tequila. And hey, there's me with my big dumb face. And speaking of me, I work at Torpen's Rodeo Market here in O'Neill for the last three years. It's a great place to work. I also work at Good News Radio, and we have another radio station in town. It's KBRX, the top dog in country. And if you're looking for a place to work, if you want to work at a radio station, I would suggest going to school and learning broadcasting. You can go to Northeast for that. We even have an extended campus in O'Neill, Nebraska. And some other school facilities here are the O'Neill Elementary school, the O'Neill High School, which has been renovated recently, I mean, and we have the St. Mary's Grade School, as well as the St. Mary's High School, both ran by the Catholic Church here. And just across the street, we have the courthouse, which they do courtly things there, of course. We also have the Nebraska National Guard up the road. Yes, it's always been inclined like that. And we have a couple of water towers here in O'Neill. This is the older one, but we also have a newer one recently constructed. And if you zoom in, it says, Welcome to O'Neill, Nebraska's Irish capital. Yes, indeed, we are Nebraska's Irish capital. We have the world's longest shamrock here in O'Neill, and we like to paint it every St. Patrick's Day and have a big parade where we also have people dancing on the shamrock, some Irish dancers, and it's always a fun time. Thanks for joining me for this trip around O'Neill. My name is Jordan Kempf, and I'm from Glenville, Nebraska. I want to give a shout out to all of my friends at Northeast. Hope everyone's doing well with all the social distancing and also online classes. Hopefully everybody's classes are going good. And really with me, my life has just been kind of it's been kind of interesting when it comes to doing the online classes, having internet troubles and things like that sometimes would limit me in being able to get my homework done, but I was still able to make sure I got all of my assignments done, and I'm just really excited for next year so we can all be back on campus and we can all just participate in our classes in person, see all of my friends once again, and I'm just super excited for that. So now I'll take you on a tour of my hometown of Glenville, Nebraska. Hi, my name is Jordan Kempf, and today I will be giving you a tour of my hometown of Glenville, Nebraska. Glenville has everything you'd find in a small town. There are small businesses and a whole lot of small town hospitality. First is the gas station. This is the best place to grab snacks and also everyone gathers for coffee in the morning. The fire hall doubles up as the town office and is home to the Glenville Fire and Rescue. This building holds a really good memory as me and a few friends helped gut out the inside to be remodeled. We did this for a school event as where every grade would go out to their hometowns and do community service for a day. We threw hammers through the wall, stripped the ceilings out, and a whole lot more. The Legion is the best place to hold events Every Tuesday, they have Burger Night, where you can go get dinner for a very affordable price. The post office handles the town's mail and distributes it to the residents of Glenville. This is the old Glenville Grocery. It used to be our local market to go buy food, but unfortunately, a few years ago, it had closed down. 
Next is Cornerstone Bank. This bank is very special to me because I started my first checking account here and I still have one here today. Next is Pride Park. This is Glenville's town park and it holds many memories for me. The ball court was home to many pickup games with my friends and there's even an old tree that used to be in the park where I climbed my very first tree. Finally is my school, Sandy Creek. Sandy Creek isn't technically in Glenville, but I attended school here from kindergarten until I graduated my senior year. Students from five towns attend Sandy Creek from Fairfield, Clay Center, Edgar, Deweese, and of course, Glenville. Tons of things at this school will never be forgotten, and in my opinion, school was always a blast. Hi, I'm Jessica Ellsbury, and my hometown is Pierce, Nebraska. Things have been quite different since I have been home from college because of COVID-19, but I am now taking all classes online like every other Northeast student. It's definitely been a challenge adapting because I'm used to now, especially being at the studio five days a week, if not seven days a week, if I go in on the weekends and get work done. Uh, what I've been doing with my days is definitely homework. I've been doing a lot of homework. Uh, just because we're online, the teachers are like, eh, still got to pile homework on. But I definitely do homework during the day. And at night, I try to hang out with my dogs and my mom when she gets home. And then if my dad gets home when I'm still up, um, I like to hang out with them during the night chat. Classes have definitely been a challenge, as I said earlier, but I feel like I am adapting well. Um, I'll admit, I have not been the best quarantine person, because I am a social butterfly, and I do not do good cooped up in the house. So I have been out driving, I have went to Osmond, I haven't been to Norfolk recently other than getting my tattoo fixed, um, and that was about it. Something I'm taking away from this experience is it's okay to um it's okay to move on. It's okay to do something overnight. Usually if it was me and it was my best case scenario, I would have gradually moved on to online, but um it kind of happened overnight. So, we came home for spring break. In February and or March or whatever, then they in February, and then they basically said you're moving online. Go get your stuff, and we're moving online. So um, that has definitely been a challenge, but I feel like I am adapting well. Uh, this is definitely making me a stronger person. Especially, I like to have things like planned, and so when I can't really play with stuff. That is definitely helping me. This is helping me to adapt to new challenges by um, when I was at the dorm, I lived by myself in PATH, and I will be living there again in fall and being an RA. So um, I have had major independence level booster, I guess. Um, I needed that for my independence and for myself. Um, so when I am done with college, I can move out of my parents' house and be on my own and find my true love and marry him and just do all the things that normal people normal people would do. But it has definitely been a big, big change um, independence-wise because when I was at the dorm, I had to do everything by myself. And now if I need help, I just tell my mom, hey, can you help me real quick? And she usually does. So that's definitely been a big change. Well, now that you know a little bit about me, I want to take you to my hometown, Pierce, Nebraska. Welcome to my hometown, Pierce, Nebraska. The elementary school has grades preschool through sixth grade. The high school has grades seven through 12, and they have many different activities that the students can get involved in. This is the home of Friday Night Lights. This is Pierce Junior Senior High Football Field. Welcome to Gilman Park. Located in Gilman Park, you can fish, have a picnic in the grass, 
or at the picnic table nearby. You can drop your kayak in and go for a ride with your friends and family. The Pierce Museum has many things for you to come look at, such as an old railroad, rural schoolhouse from back in the day, blacksmith shop, farm machinery building, and so much more. We have our own public pool where the kids love to come hang out during the summer. Playground next to the pool is another great place where the kids love to hang out. It was called Short Stop before Wanda bought it and we did the whole thing. When Wanda bought it, she renamed it and named it Jay's Place. The fire hall holds all of our emergency vehicles. They also host National Night Out once a year. The liquor store is a small convenience store that has pretty much everything that you could want to snack on. Subway is connected to it, so they're all in one corner for convenience. TLC Car Wash is the newest addition to Pierce. It is owned by Michael Bauman. The thrift shop here in Pierce is a great place for you to shop. It has a little bit of everything for everybody in your family. Expressions, Florals, and Gifts is owned by Pink. She does flower arrangements for almost every event you can imagine. The Pierce County Fair is held at the fairground. They also hold the threshing bee every September. Tom Service is part gas station and part repair shop. If your car is acting good, you can take it anywhere and they will try their best to fix it. It is owned by our mayor, Tom Meyer. Thank you for visiting my hometown, Pierce, Nebraska. For KHWK Hawk TV, I'm Jesse Ellsbury. My name is Luke Byer. My hometown is Fontenelle, Nebraska. I'd like to give a shout out to my dad who owns Fontenelle Orchards inside of uh, Fontenelle. And what has life been like during this time of taking classes at home? It's been a little bit stressful. Um, just with everyone being home, the internet isn't great. So doing projects and uh, uploading stuff has been a little bit of a struggle. It takes a few tries, but you know, we make the most of it and you can, you can only control what you can control. What do I miss most about college is just the freedom and seeing my friends. And um, yeah, um, that's just what I miss the most. And adapting the online classes has been a little bit of a challenge just because I'm so used to how many years of just going in and being in person and uh, having a set time every single uh, class period and especially just being in person. Um, it's been a little bit of a transition, but I think I handled it well. What is something that I'm taking away from this experience is that nothing is like certain that anything can happen at any time. And so this was just so unexpected within like a span of one or two weeks that we were living on campus, going to class, and boom, we're back at home doing Zoom classes and doing projects from home. And um, this has helped me um, adapt to new challenges just by being able to take a different look and a different approach at everything in my life. And uh, I think it really helped me with my accountability, just being able just to do stuff on my own and making sure that I'm getting stuff turned in on time. And now I would like to take you on a tour of my hometown. This town was named in honor of the Omaha tribe leader who was killed in 1855 by the Sioux tribe. Fontenot, Nebraska, to most is just a small unincorporated town just inside of Washington County. But to some, it's called home. With a population of a little over 100 people, it has multiple places to offer entertainment. With just a short 10 minute drive to Fremont and a 35 minute drive to Omaha, it's never hard to find something to do. But in town, there are various places to visit. Sitting just off the Elkhorn River, fishing here provides a great opportunity to get out. Camp Fontenelle provides opportunities for intentional Christian community through hosting retreats, reunions, community events, group activities, and summer camps for all ages. This also includes hiking and zip lining too, along with various other activities. Next, Fontenelle Orchards is run by longtime owner Tim Vai and it sits right off Highway 91. Fontana Orchards has 100 apple trees on seven acres, along with a roadside tent just north of Fremont on 275. That offers many options of fruits, veggies, pies, cider, and many more. Fontana also has Salem Lutheran Church with, offer, with offers services every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. I can safely say everyone is proud how Fontana looks and what it attributes to small town Nebraska. Everyone in Fontenelle is committed to a small town life, and honestly, I wouldn't change it for the world. 